Hey there, welcome back to The Well-Balanced Mind. My name is Shannon Rollins, your host, and I drop into you weekly to provide tips and insights to understanding your mind, understanding who you are, to live a happier, healthier life inside and out. And I'm a clinical hypnotherapist located in Orlando, Florida, and I am so excited that you decided to join me today. And today we are actually going to be talking about our intuition, how to listen to your intuition. And what is your intuition? I mean, we we all, every time I think of the word intuition, I always think of Shakira and her song, <laughs> Follow Your Heart, Your Intuition. I remember growing up hearing that song and I had no idea what it ever meant. And I gotta be honest with you, throughout all of my career transformations, throughout everything that I went through in my 20s, I had no clue what my intuition was. And I gotta tell you, a lot of my clients don't know how to listen to their intuition either and what that even means for them. What is the actual definition of what your intuition is? And have you ever met someone who has been very wishy-washy? And what I mean by wishy-washy is they can't make a decision. They're indecisive. I want you to imagine that you are on a, on a drive to a restaurant with one of your friends and you both keep going back and forth. I don't know what to eat. What do you feel like eating? Oh, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know what I should be eating. Oh, I don't want this. I don't want that. So you do the process of elimination by saying all the things you don't want until you finally land on what you do want. Meanwhile, an hour has passed and you're so hungry that you will eat anything at this point. Come on, I know you've been through this. I know that everyone has been through this at least a couple times. There's a running joke about it that you can't figure out what you want to eat for dinner. That is because we're not tapping into our intuition and what our specific needs are. And take it from me, the person who made all of the wrong decisions <laughs> in my 20s when it came to dating. Now, have you ever seen a friend or have, have you ever been that friend who has completely ignored every red flag in the dating scene? ignored every red flag. I work with many clients up to today who still are trying to break that pattern of what that means for them and being able to listen to what their needs are instead of what they're used to, what they are actually being guided to do. Same thing with career. Do you feel like you're being called to the career that you're in right now? And if you're not, how do you tap in to your intuition to know specifically what that is? Now, let's first go over why it's so hard for us to tap into our intuition. First one being is we have blocks. When we have blocks within us, and some of these blocks being fear, the biggest block we can have for our intuition is fear. Fear of failure is a huge one. If you have a fear of failure, do you think you're gonna be able to listen to your intuition rather than the fear? It's almost like the angel and devil on the shoulder example. You have the angel on one side that's telling you, man, follow what you need to do, follow your heart, go for what you need, go for what you want. And then you have the devil on the other side saying, but what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work out? What if, what if, what if? That huge question, what if, can really, really make things cloudy for us. The more you ask what if, the more cloudy we're getting here. And when I do this, I mean in, into your heart. You know, Tony Robbins, if you know Tony Robbins, he says, if you're in your head, you're dead. If you're in your heart, you're smart. Now, this might actually go against the grain. This might go against what you've been taught growing up. And what we've been taught is that we need to think logically about our decisions. We need to think logically about what we want to happen for us. But <laughs> the reality is, if you look at every single super successful business owner in the world and you ask them, do you know how many of them will say that they intuitively make executive decisions on things? And to intuitively make quick executive decisions on things you have to have all of the information. So sometimes it's lack of information. That's another reason why we might not be making decisions with our intuition. 
So when we don't have the information we need, we're not really as confident about making a decision for us. Third issue of tapping in, besides fear, huge fear, that huge block, that boulder, and not having enough information is perfectionism. Now, <laughs> perfectionism can be a little tricky because you're putting yourself to a standard of what? What does perfect even mean? And usually what perfectionism comes from is our childhood development and being taught that we need to act or be a certain way. And if we're not acting or being a certain way, then we're not good enough. Now, our parents aren't doing this on purpose to us. And any, single, any person who's a parent right? If, if you're a parent and you're listening to this right now, you're probably being like, thinking to yourself, oh crap, like what am I doing to my kids? Listen, we all have to go through things to grow through them. So don't worry about that. You're doing the, you're doing the best you can. You really are. So always keep that in mind as we go through this. But per, with perfectionism, the reason why we could potentially be blocking is because we trust that the downloads we're receiving, our intuition and our wisdom is not good enough. So we don't trust ourselves to make certain decisions, okay? And the next one is people-pleasing. This one is huge. If you're a people-pleaser, you will be ignoring, purposely ignoring what your intuition tells you because you're afraid of what other people will think. And that also goes to a fear of being judged, a fear of judgment, right? But with people-pleasing, I'm gonna give you an example, right? You have this fear of people not liking you. Let's just say that's the reason why you people please. And people, pe people, people please for specific reasons. Some of it is just that childhood programming we have in our nervous system, that those are the action, those are the patterns that we've created and we've thrived off of. Because we might think, if I'm pleasing this one person, then that means I'm gonna be loved. And what is the number one thing that we need in our life is love. It doesn't matter if you're male, female, it doesn't matter. We all need to feel loved. If you boil down any need, anything that we ever have, it's to feel loved. It really is. If we're really cutting through, and you can challenge me on that, we'll talk through it and in maybe another episode. But that people pleasing is going to keep you because you'll actually hear your intuition and you'll listen to your intuition, but you will purposely ignore it. And I got to be blunt with you. Don't you think that's kind of a slap to the face? If you're getting downloads and you're getting information of stuff you should be doing and because you want to make someone else happy or you're afraid of someone else's judgment, you say, Psh, I don't need you. Intuition, higher self, whatever that means for you, whatever your beliefs are, that's a slap to the face for, <laughs> for your higher self, for your intuition, for God, for angels, for spirit guides, whatever it is you believe, that is a slap to the face. If you're purposely ignoring your information uh, intuition, you have to break through that, break through whatever that fear is with that people pleasing. And so the first step, right, in knowing this, you might have heard me say a couple things. You might say, man, Perfectionism could be a reason why I'm having a hard time understanding what is right for me. And the first step is always awareness. Awareness is always going to be the first step with anything that we go through, right? Anything that I talk about in here, it's always going to be, you have to know where you are. You have to be able to tap in and accept where you are because you might not like where you are. Now, I remember when I went through really learning this. And I remember always thinking to myself, oh man, I really want to do this, but I am terrified to do this. And when I say this, I mean my career. Being a hypnotherapist, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I would be doing hypnotherapy, I would have completely laughed in your face. And I can tell you the only reason I'm where I am today and doing what I am today is because I pushed through the fear and I listened to my intuition. And not only in that, I did the work. And what do I mean by doing the work? The work is being able to understand what your blocks are and understanding where they are coming from. Your blocks are coming from somewhere. 
it, it's usually an authority figure of something in childhood. When our subconscious mind is wide open and we are taking all this information as children, we are dysregulating our nervous system if we've had trauma, if we've had any type of hurt which every child has hurt, right? But it's being able to understand where those blocks are coming from and what they are. We all have them. No one's exempt from having blocks in this human experience. That's what helps us grow. That's a, what enables us to be better. So we could help cultivate a community and help other people grow as well. So it's needed, right? We grow through that. But at the same time, being able to tap in and know when do I need to make these changes. So awareness, that's your first step. So identify right now, right here and now, what is your block? What do you feel your pattern is? And this is what we would consider a symptom. Is it people pleasing? Is it perfectionism? Is it a fear of something, fear, fear of failure, rejection, whatever, judgment, whatever it may be? right? Whatever that fear is. Is it because you're hurting right now? Are you grieving? Are you in the middle of a storm? Because if you're in the middle of the storm, sometimes it's either A, harder to tap into it because you're clouded by those emotions, or B, maybe you're enlightened by it. And so sometimes we just have to take a step back and pause and ask ourselves, where are, me, where are we right now? And here's the interesting thing about our intuition and the subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind speaks through our body. You get the eye twitching, you get the finger moving all the time, or jerky movements, or weight gain, stress, ulcers autoimmune diseases, heart disease, cancer, whatever it is, our subconscious mind can potentially be speaking to us and telling us what do you need, anxiety, depression. If you're experiencing any of these things, and I'll give you an example, I had psoriasis and I was taking all these medications, all of these things that I needed to take, and then I went through and I saw a hypnotherapist and I did it multiple, multiple times and I cleared through some deep stuff. And there was one revolutionary thing that I was holding on to. And it was guilt from a decision that I've made in the past. And you know what happened? After I resolved that and cleared that, my psoriasis went away. Tell me that's not your subconscious mind speaking to you and being able to work through some of this. Now, obviously, there's going to be physical things you need. This is a great supplement. Doing something like hypnotherapy or just doing the work in general is a great supplement to something you're already doing, right? So with weight loss, if someone comes to me for weight loss, it's never about the weight loss. We work through what is the trauma? What are the blocks that you're experiencing? What are the emotions and beliefs that you have tied to your weight gain? Are you holding on to the weight for a reason? Let's get to the bottom of that. It's almost like we're investigators together. We're being able to investigate and move through whatever that looks like. And once you clear, I call it clearing, once you're able to clear, once you're able to peel through and peel back those layers and be clear here energetically in your soul, up and down where you are, through all your chakras, being able to clear them all and trust and know what it feels like to be clear, then you can easily listen to your intuition and make an executive decision. I have zero problems now saying where I want to go out to eat because <laughs> I know what my body needs. I know what my body wants. And you can have the same thing too And making a decision, making harder decisions. I'll teach you a great recipe for how to make a hard decision. But even these small things, understanding who you are and what you need is going to make a huge difference because this is practice. Listening to your intuition is practice. So when we think about it, what's my personal take on intuition? Now, there are many studies and scientific uh, things out there, right, that say that your intuition is based on your past experiences, the emotions tied to your past experiences, and your brain drawing upon those memories and those past experiences to make an executive decision of what is right for you. Now, if I use this example for my hypnotherapy business, it wouldn't have worked. So I'm going to give you my personal take on intuition. 
I call them spiritual downloads. I believe that when we have intuition, we're trusting a higher power that is guiding us to make these decisions. Oh, I get all the feel goods when I'm talking about this, right? Being able to trust what you're supposed to be doing. I can tell you when I first started my business, I would always just sit back and say, man, I'm scared. I'm fearful of what's going to happen, what people are going to think. Is this going to work for me? <laughs> Am I going to lose all my money and end up homeless on the street? You don't know how many times I would stay up at night so anxious because I was so afraid of what was going to happen. But I would always say, if this is not it, guide me to where you, you need me to be. Guide me to where I am meant to be the most. And this is based on anything you believe, right? Like you can guide me. It could be your higher self, right? It could just be you. It could be God, spirit guides, asking for guidance, asking you shall receive, baby. Like you will get downloads because then you'll know exactly what's not right. So when I was doing my coaching business, right, I was really feeling like something was missing. And I was doing coaching for probably a year and a half. And I always felt like there was something missing. And I actually was doing health coaching for many years before that. And I just didn't feel 100% fulfilled on my path. And I always knew it. I just knew there was something going on and I didn't know what it was. And I always would say every single day, keep leading me. I, even if it sounds crazy, just keep leading me to where I need to be. And that's how I got to where I am today. So I want to empower you to have hope, to tell yourself, listen, if this isn't where I'm meant to be, I may be scared, but just keep leading me. Give me signs. And I'm going to explain to you what the signs look like. If you are tapping in to your intuition and you feel aligned, your new word is aligned. It's not hustle. It's not force it until it breaks and it works for you. No, 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 no. If you're forcing it, then there's something off. Either the timing is not right or you're not aligned with what your intuition is telling you. So what does aligned look like? Flow. That's your word, flow, to be in flow. Have you ever been like reading a book or writing something or driving and you're just jamming out, listening to music, feeling good? That is what flow feels like, but it feels like that throughout your life, right? When you're in flow and you feel like, man, things are working really well for me, like this feels right. Have you ever met someone, a friend, or a loved one, or whoever, you met like your partner, and you're just like, this feels super right to me. And you just know right away. It could be a job, like, oh, I know it, this is right. That's when you're listening to your intuition. That is when you know that it's aligned. So here's another tip for your intuition. Learn to say no to things that don't feel aligned. The reason why you need to say no is because you're telling yourself right? You're telling yourself that it's okay to create space. You're not in a mindset of scarcity, but you're in a mindset of growth. So when you say no, then you open up space for something else to come in. And also clearing out whatever that space is to welcome new things back in. But you have to create space or it's just going to stay out there saying, I'm waiting for you to invite me in. <laughs> so being able to invite it in and feeling good in the process. The other way you know that you've tapped into your intuition and you're in flow is you feel good, right? You feel, there might be some pieces that are kind of out of whack, right? But in the grand scheme of things, you're like, okay, I'm vibing, I'm flowing, this feels kind of good to me. That's when you know that you've tapped in. That's when you know that you're in flow. So alignment over hustle. That is the biggest thing. If you can take anything away today, it's alignment over hustle. You want to know what my business strategy is for my business? Is to feel good. To focus on feeling good. Do I have freak out moments? 
Absolutely. Who doesn't? We're humans, right? But focus on feeling good and also take action. You can't focus on feeling good and just sit back and expect all of these things to happen for you. You have to actually put in the work a little bit, but not to the point where you're just forcing it, forcing it, forcing it to where it hurts. <laughs> because then, then your energy is gonna be negative and you're only gonna be attracting some of those negative things into your life. So focus on some small things to feel good. And then lastly, I really wanna take you through a exercise that can help you tap into your intuition a little more. You've gone through and kind of identified what blocks you wanna work through. Then you've moved into, okay, why is this happening a little bit and really taking action on that. So I want you to just pause for a moment and take a sit back and correct your spine, have it just be nice and tall, okay? And just take a couple deep breaths. And you can gently close your eyes and I'll just walk you through this real quick. As your eyes are closed, I just want you to focus on a memory when something felt really, really good. Something felt exciting and aligned. And when you pull on that memory, take a moment and I want you to listen to your body. Where do you feel that? within your body. Do you feel it, little butterflies in your stomach? Do you feel it in your chest? Does it feel light? Does it feel open? What does that sensation feel like for you? Take note of it, write it down, wherever. And then just open your eyes and kind of shake it out a little bit, shake it out. And then when you're ready, you can close your eyes down again. And I want you to focus on a memory of something that didn't feel right. Like you knew it didn't feel right, you did it anyways, and then you said, dang it, I knew better, I knew it. And that's because you were ignoring your intuition, by the way, that red flag. Now, I want you to listen to your body there. And what does that feel like? Is there tightness? Does it feel more closed in your chest? Are you feeling something in your solar plexus? Is it a different feeling? I have some people say like my big toe hurts. <laughs> It doesn't have to be here. It can be anywhere. Does the top of your head hurt? Is it in your eyes? Where are you feeling it in your body when you think about those moments where something did not feel right to you? Take note of it. Write it down. Now shake it out. Look at the differences of how you felt when it felt good and how you felt when it felt bad. And that is how you're going to know if you're tapping in to your intuition or not. And use this as a guide. This is not a be all end all, right? Use this as a guide for how it feels to feel good versus how it feels to have that gut. And being able to identify what are the differences between fear, right? That fear getting in the way and being able to listen. And that's why I say you need to clear in advance. Also, you need to clear some of those blocks to be able to recognize the difference between fear and that. So pause, listen, and feel. And you will get so much better each and every day as you practice this exercise and tapping into your intuition. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm always so grateful to have you here listening to some of my information, some of my knowledge, and I will see you next time on The Well-Balanced Mind. See you then. Thanks.